literally out of nowhere, tomatoes, like, it just popped in my head, like, tomatoes, make a song about tomatoes. So, what I did, I made a song about tomatoes. <laughs> What's good, Legacy Verse family? It's your boy Legacy here, and I'm here to break down the lyrics and the meaning of your favorite song, The Tomato Song. To be honest, the idea of The Tomato Song, it came out of nowhere in my mind. When I made the Legacy Verse channel, I knew that I wanted to make music from a perspective of something that I couldn't, like, that you usually wouldn't hear the perspective of, like, a person or place or thing that you normally would not hear the perspective of. I automatically let that sit, I let that like marinate in my mind without having a specific idea of what I wanted to do. Off the rip, it just like popped in my head. And it's interesting like, cause lyrics come to me in a, in a like an interesting way. I can have an idea of, of like a song and when I create a song, it's normally like the skeleton of the song is like, just comes in my head like that. And after time or after like focus, after like I put attention on it, the flesh and the meat and the bones, all the cells and all the bones, you know, that just starts to like populate in my head in chunks. And if I don't hurt but like document it, write it down or like say it in my voice memos or something like record myself speaking it, I'll like forget them. So my phone is like full of thousands of voice memos of me just coming up with beat ideas or just things that just pop into my head and I gotta document it because otherwise I'll forget it. So the song starts off like this. I say my name is Tomato Paste. I'll slap Italians in the face. What I'm trying to say is I hate always getting eight. So imagine that you were a tomato for a second. Just, just imagine. Now I know, okay. You wouldn't like to be getting eaten, you know what I'm saying? Pulled out the ground, planted and plucked out the ground and chopped up and put in somebody's salad and put on somebody's spaghetti. So so since you've imagined yourself as a tomato, you can see the anger of this tomato, you know? Show up to your dinner date with me spread out all on your plate. I ain't with the beef, but you just made an enemy. Okay? <laughs> so it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot of things wrapped up into that little line. So. Show up to your dinner date with me spread out all on your plate. Obviously, you can eat pasta. You know, that's a romantic dish, you know what I'm saying? Fellas, if you need if you need to take notes, it's pasta, spaghetti, you know, these things are like romantic dishes. A lot of times you eat tomatoes with that. I mean, unless you're on some Alfredo type stuff. You would have them spread out all on your plate, all on your noodles, on your bowl or whatever. And so he's angry about that. The tomatoes is not happy about that. I ain't with the beef, but you just made an enemy. Okay, this is you know, say, okay, I give myself a pat on the back, man. I ain't with the beef, okay? When people say they have beef with somebody, you know, they beefing, that means they're, like, angry. They're, like, hatred towards another person. They, they're fighting or whatever. It's a play on words because tomatoes and beef, that's spaghetti. You can see I like spaghetti a lot. <laughs> hey, yo, I'm Heinz. Plant my seeds inside the earth. Now my seeds became vines. So Heinz, man, Heinz ketchup. When you plant the seed of a tomato in the earth, it grows vines and it grows more tomatoes from that, right? I just want to give everybody like a biology lesson. I stay at the top of mind whenever you eat fries. Hamburgers, chicken nuggets with ketchup on the side. You can eat tomatoes, you eat ketchup with all of those dishes. You eat fries, you probably eat ketchup. You eat hamburgers, you probably eat tomatoes in it. Some people eat ketchup on it. I don't. Chicken nuggets, dipping in barbecue sauce or ketchup. Oh, you thought we enjoyed being ate? Somebody lie! Okay, whoever told you the tomatoes enjoy being eaten, they lied, okay? Tomatoes don't enjoy being eaten. The more you know. Alright, next verse. The funny thing is we're popular in every culture. Ha <laughs> ha! We ain't even dead you try to eat us like a vulture. This this tomato mentioned how, you know, vultures eat things like after they die. They're like scavengers. But you eating them like a vulture because you're coming at them viciously. You're coming at them like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, ah. You know what I'm saying? You come after tomatoes like that and you eating them like if you were a vulture. It's torture. I forgot to mention that it's very scary. Liquefy our bodies, then you turn us to a Bloody Mary. <laughs> Imagine you were a tomato again. Just get into the mindset of a tomato, okay? Okay. It would be very scary if you knew that your fate was to get taken out the ground from your home, to get blended up, you know what I'm saying? To get blended up and get turned into a drink, liquefy and get turned into a drink that people call a Bloody Mary, a tomato-based drink, and then get drunk by somebody. That, that, that's a pretty um, horrible fate. All right, next verse. All this culinary creativity is going to cost ya. 
We are not your friend when you turn us into salsa. That's that's a play on words again, but uh, the culinary creativity, because you can take tomatoes, you can make all kinds of stuff. This tomato, which actually has been reduced to a pile of salsa now, this is salsa talking to you. Culinary creativity is gonna cost you. He's, he's gonna get his revenge some kind of way in the future. Not your friend, okay? If you look at the lyrics, I spelled it out very clearly. I put it in caps, not your friend. A lot of people eat cheese with nachos, but some people I know eat salsa with nachos and chips. So that's another play on words. We are not your friend when you turn us into salsa. That's <laughs> Psychologically, you are insane. You need a doctor to put us in a V8 can and drink tomato salsa. From the perspective of a tomato, you can see why he would be angry. Turning him into liquid as well, putting him in a V8 can and drinking tomato sauce. I agree with him. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty insane to drink tomato sauce V8. I drink the fruit-based V8s. Now, I'm not even really a big V8 drinker like that. But everybody, you know, do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Do you. I bet vegans and vegetarians feel like they're helping the world more. What? They ain't helping us by turning to an herbivore. It's a commendable um, practice for people to turn into vegans, you know, become vegetarians and vegans. You know, where they reduce their diet to, to plant-based um, foods. Honestly, people reduce their diet to plant-based foods in the attempt of... Um, like not eating live animals and live creatures uh, but tomatoes and, and, and plants are they're living as well but that's another topic for another day uh, i don't want to know i don't want the comment section to be full of vegans and vegetarians fighting i'm just coming from the perspective of this tomato this tomato is he, he's just saying i bet vegans and vegetarians feel like they're helping the world more i mean that's a commendable thing to to try to save you know animal lives but he's a tomato so he's gonna get eaten by vegans they ain't helping us by turning to an herbivore Okay, herbivores eat plants, vegetarians and vegans eat plants. You pluck us out the ground and over more like dinosaurs, then you sprinkle us in salad after you chop us up, of course. Referring to dinosaurs that were herbivores, not the T-Rexes, not the Velociraptors, but the other ones, the long neck branchiosauruses and, and all of those. They don't care if you are a tomato and you have a family. They only want to eat. And so that's what he's referring to, this tomato is referring to is the tomato, the, the humans who just pluck you out the ground with no remorse like dinosaurs. Then you sprinkle us in salad after you chop us up, of course, okay? So this is a chopped tomato talking here. He's, he's chopped up. He's chopped and screwed. And it's just the harsh reality out here for these tomatoes, man. <laughs> All right, so the next verse. We're alive, too. Don't only look at us as food. And then you hear in the background. Hey, we're living. And besides, we actually find it pretty rude. Like I mentioned earlier, vegans and vegetarians attempts. This is the tomatoes, man. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. The, to the vegans and vegetarians' perspective is that they're trying to preserve life, you know, preserve animals by reducing their diet to plants. But the plants are also living, so this tomato is just saying, We're living too! Okay, you don't. You know what I'm saying? Don't get mad at me. When you plant us in the earth, we already know this one was screwed. We're screwed. Let's reverse the roles. How would you like to be chopped and stewed? And that's a good perspective. I mean, like if you put your mindset and you put your perspective into that of a tomato, you can see how he would want you to switch the roles and just, just live a day in his shoes. You know what I'm saying? Um, how would you like to be chopped and stewed? I wouldn't like that. All right, so we're going to get into the last verse here. <laughs> and if you haven't heard the song by now, you got to make sure you go check it out. I don't know if it's at the top that way or that way. Uh, make sure you check that out because we're gonna get we getting into the mastermind tomato realm. Okay, we getting into the higher dimensional mastermind tomato here. He says, "I'm the mastermind tomato, philosophical like Plato. As humans do as I say, so I lay low, ensuring my plan to reach today's goals to spread the globe surpasses that of potatoes." Just a little background on the mastermind tomato. The mastermind tomato is the creator of human life. Okay. <laughs> This mastermind tomato is is a it, he exists on a higher dimension, okay? He's not just a third dimensional tomato just sitting around in the ground like these tomatoes are. This tomato is the mastermind tomato. He created human life for his own reasons, which we're gonna get into in a few seconds. And he's just letting you know that he's philosophical like Plato, you know what I'm saying? And because he's the creator of human life, he has humans doing what what he wants them to do, unforcedly. Like he's not commanding you, humans, do this, do this. He just has you subconsciously wired to do these things, which we're going to get into in a second as well. He's a higher dimensional being, and his name is the Mastermind Tomato. Let's continue with his verse. My subordinates who lack ambition never seem to understand my division mission. They desire not to get eaten. That's a contradiction. So I created the human vessel. That was my decision. His subordinates are the tomatoes that we just heard the perspectives of. 
this remember mastermind tomato is a is a tomato but he's a higher dimensional tomato okay he's not just a regular tomato here Duh. these tomatoes that we just heard the perspective of earlier they they are not on the same mental plane as the mastermind tomato and they don't understand the true course of events that are happening here and how they play a role in the in the ultimate um <laughs> In the course of events that the mastermind tomato has overlaid so the mastermind tomato in his in all his wisdom sees them as those who have a lack of ambition they're his subordinates who lack ambition never seem to understand my division mission so the mastermind tomato like i said again his goal is to is just to continue to divide and, and multiply exponentially and spread across the earth right and surpass that of potatoes ultimately Tomatoes have to get planted, harvested, eaten, and planted again for that process to, to be possible. The mastermind tomato already knows this, and so he's going to mention again that he needed to create humans to, to keep that process going. Otherwise, tomatoes will, however they get across the earth, like they'll just be that generation of tomatoes, and they won't be able to reproduce and, and spread like they have. So the humans were necessary in this, in this master plan that the mastermind tomato put into play. <laughs> This is getting deep, guys. Come on, man. You gotta stay with me. So, to continue, they desire not to get eaten. That's a contradiction. So, I created the human vessel. That was my decision. So, like I just mentioned, the humans were necessary in this in this master plan to divide and spread the world with tomatoes. Um, and, and for that to be possible, humans have to eat tomatoes, like, or else they're not gonna plant them. What are you planting them for and, and reproducing them for? So, the humans were necessary, and the eating of tomatoes are necessary. This is the mastermind tomato here. This I'm just a messenger, guys. I'm just channeling the mastermind tomato and all his wisdom. So again, he goes into further detail. He says, simply put, the only way that I can spread my seed is if the humans kept eating and planting more for me. When I, the mastermind tomato, created human beings, ultimately it was to help me build a family. He's really an admirable tomato. Now he's seeing how his desire for this plan to work, he wasn't being sensible. He wasn't caring about his like offspring. He was just producing offspring like a factory and he just wanted the humans to keep producing them without really caring about the perspective and the the viewpoints of the tomatoes of his subordinates. So this is the mastermind tomato realizing what is going on. But now I see how my offspring can bottle up all of this hate. From their perspective, all they live for is just to be ate. It isn't fair that they're forced to endure such a fate. So a revolutionary plan I must postulate. I've got it. And he's reevaluating his plan here and he's just now seeing how, from the perspective of the subordinate tomatoes, that all they live for, they feel like all they live for is just to be planted and eaten, which is what it is. But he's kind of starting to see that. And then he's going to develop a mastermind plan, a revolutionary plan to try to stop that. It's just him flashing back again and just realizing what he's done and what he's going to do now later. Manipulating the minds of mankind is pretty fine until you find that all this time it was you that crossed the line. And he's talking about himself. He's just reflecting in himself. Like imagine him looking in a mirror, an interdimensional mirror. And he's manipulating the minds of mankind. He's been doing that for millions of years. Yeah, he's kind of getting tired of that. Yeah. So now what should he do? Um, well, let's see. To put a stop to this madness, I might ask for your help. But since you probably wouldn't, I'm just going to eat myself. <laughs> that was his ultimate decision. He ended up eating himself and uh, just putting himself out of his misery that he's experienced. Reflecting from the perspective of the subordinate tomatoes. He ultimately wasn't a bad guy. Um, he ended up eating himself, but um, it was it was necessary in, in, from his perspective. And so that was <laughs> that was the tomato song. It got really deep at the end. The mastermind tomato is the mastermind tomato after all. He's not just a regular tomato running around. He's a higher dimensional being. Okay. Overall, honestly, if I'll be honest, it was uh, so fun making this song, making this project. I do like everything. Okay. I I produce the beat. I engineered the beat, I wrote the lyrics, I made the song, uh, I, I did everything, and I, I really enjoyed the whole process, and like, I love, 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 I love making music, honestly, and I wanted to like, put a spin on like, music in general, opposed to like, just making regular music like everybody else does, which is nothing wrong with, just I wanted to do something different, and I really enjoyed this process, and ultimately what I want to do, what this whole channel is about, is... Having fun, because I honestly had fun. The whole process, this is fun for me. Like, I, I, this is fun. I'm doing all this myself, too. I got lights all over the place, cameras. This is so fun for me. So, I really enjoy this, and I want to, like, I hope that my fun, that fun that I'm having, rubs off on you all and, and encourages you all to have fun doing whatever you do as well. Like, you don't have to do it 
the way that everybody else does it. Do it the way that makes you have the most fun. So my whole channel is about having fun. You can come here to to look at me have fun, which can be fun for people. You can engage in the challenges that I do. I put out a lot of challenges to get you all active and engaged to have fun because it's fun for me. It's all, you know, if you engage and you participate with the challenges that I put out and in the community because I want to build a whole community of people who love to have fun. And if you love to have fun, then you got to subscribe because this is where you should be. Like, this is the fun place. I have so much in store for you. And it's just, just an overall going to be an overall fun experience in Legacy Verse, where I'm the king. See, that's why I wear the crown, because I'm the king of Legacy Verse, okay? So overall, like, I want people to have fun watching me or either joining in with me. And I invite you all to do that. Oh, yeah, this is my whole goal here. I want to I wanna spread fun across the earth, man. I really feel like music, well, everybody needs to have fun, period. Music is the language that everybody speaks. Whether the song is in the language that they speak or not, people love music in, in, in other countries. There are songs that I like that I don't even know what they're saying, but it's just the vibe of the song, you know, and I hope that my channel and my music can also provide that for people across the world. So I want to spread fun across the world, and this is my goal, okay? This is not a joke. This is the goal for Legacy Verse and for the songs that I produce and put out, specifically for the Tomato song right now. I want you all to help me with this, okay? I'm asking for you all's help. I want the Tomato song to become a platinum song, okay? A platinum song in, entails a couple of things, but I would need you all to share it, post it, join the challenges, participate, and just spread the word of the tomato song because honestly, man, this is just so fun for me, okay? I'm trying to be, I'm trying to keep it cool. I'm trying to like whew, practice my controlled breathing, okay? But I just honestly am having like a time of my life making this content, and so this is something like I've never felt before. So I want this to like spread across the world, man, to spread the fun, to spread the love and the joy that I'm that I'm having. And hopefully it can rub off on other people. Maybe you all make music too. And I'll have some challenges where you all can like join in and make your own version of the tomato song from a tomato's perspective to my beat, to the instrumental that I made. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on the notification bell. Do all that because I'm gonna have so much more coming very, very, very soon. It's just gonna be super fun. And so if you stayed this far, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. And make sure you participate in the challenges. Subscribe, all that. And it's going to be fun, fun, fun from here on out. That's the end of the episode with Legacy Verse. All right. Uh, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Legacy. Peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.